people have turned their personal vehicles into taxi cabs. <laughs> that is not normal. Now, don't get me wrong, it's convenient. We all love ride shares. Everybody love it. You love Uber and Lyft, we all use it, but that's not normal. God bless you if you do it, but you shouldn't have to do it. Even some of these ride share companies, they know that they're driving people around at three in the morning. They know this crazy. On the website, you sign up to be a driver on some of these sites. It says on the website, and I quote, get your side hustle on. <laughs> Your side hustle? You're not supposed to need a side hustle. I don't know if you remember what they told us in school growing up, but we had a career day. You only needed one job. That's what they told you, one job. It was a career day. There was never a side hustle day. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an astronaut. OK, but what's your side hustle going to be? The first time I felt like I was funny, was high school baseball, because I rode the bench. So when you ride the bench in baseball, your job is to yell whatever you need to say to distract the other team from performing well. We would write stuff to yell. So we were basically writing bits without even knowing it. I can't even repeat some of the stuff that we were saying across the baseball field. If I tweeted today what I said in 1995, for sure, for sure, unpaid administrative leave. Please put your hands together for Mr. Roy Wood Jr. How are you, New York? Are you OK? Yeah. This is what the Democrats haven't figured out yet. The Democrats still haven't figured out that they, they're, they're running against a lunatic. Trump is crazy. It's crazy. You're not gonna be crazy with logic. Every debate that I've seen the Democrats do, they all logical. Don't nobody give a damn about logic. <laughs> oh, and if I am president, I will make sure that the policies and the... <laughs> Trump said if you re-elect him, he will cure AIDS and cancer. <laughs> and cancer. The AIDS ain't that big a deal. Well, motherfucker, I'm gonna throw in that cancer for free. You're not gonna beat somebody like that on logic. The only thing be crazy is crazy. You have to run on a lie. That's the brilliant thing that Trump does. He just lies and runs on it and he wins. The only thing beat a lie is better. Like right now, if I was a Democrat and I was running against Trump, the, the, my only campaign point would be that my wall would be better than his wall. That's it. I wouldn't talk about shit else at the debates. <laughs> You'd ask me questions, I wouldn't know the answer because I'm talking about my wall. <laughs> well, Mr. Wood, how do you feel about healthcare? Man, I don't know nothing about healthcare, but let me tell you about my wall. <laughs> it's gonna have missiles and machine guns, <laughs> thermal sight and 50 cal round, unloading on everybody. And I have shirts, call myself Missile Man. I have merch. <laughs> be a picture of me sitting on the missile. That's, that's pretty much. And that's all I would talk about. And I would obliterate every Democrat running. I would obliterate them in the primaries because I got a damn missile wall. <laughs> and now I'm head to head against Trump. Now I'm head to head against Trump. And now if you're a Trump supporter and you're a racist, now you got a real decision to make. Because <laughs> you hate black people. But you love missiles. You love them. <laughs> and that's how you turn those votes. I win, I get elected, I put my hand on the Bible, and you solemnly swear to promise you in America. And then I turn to the crowd after I take my hand off the Bible, and I go, ain't no wall, bitch. Come on in, Mexicans. <laughs> Run on the lie. Are we still blaming video games for mass shootings, or was that just last week's thing? <laughs> We're all for that now? We're back to video games are good? Okay, cool. <laughs> people say video games are violent. I don't know about that, man. I know people that don't even like you to play Street Fighter, which to me is the most peaceful of all the video games. <laughs> like, of all the violent video games, Street Fighter is the best one. Nobody dies in Street Fighter. It's not Mortal Kombat. You ain't ripping somebody's spine and they heart out their chest. You get your ass whooped in Street Fighter, then you get life advice. <laughs> It's the only video game that gives you advice. You get your ass whooped, and then the dude who whooped your ass look you in the face and go, go home and be a family man. <laughs> you gotta respect that. 
Plus, if you played Street Fighter, it was a brilliant game. This game was just so bare bones basic. Two strangers meet in a public place <laughs> and just whoop each other's ass. There's no journey, there's no quest. There's no person, there's no princess to rescue in the castle. It's just two dudes at a fish market. Uh, hey, I heard you was talking shit. Would you like to fight? Yes, I would. You want to come back tonight when it's closed? No, let's fight right now during normal business hours. Because that's the crazy shit about Street Fighter is that if you never played Street Fighter, in the background, commerce is happening. It's people throwing fireballs at each other. And in the background, it's just people in a fish market. And then just behind them, yeah, let me get the catfish nuggets. And uh, I get some of them crab legs too. You know what, bag that up to go. I'm gonna get that to go. They, they throwing the fireballs again. important life lessons taught in Street Fighter. The lesson in Street Fighter never came from the people fighting. The life lesson in Street Fighter came from the people in the background. No matter what's going on around you in this world, mind your goddamn business. <laughs> and maybe you'll get home safely. I basically believe there are only two types of jokes worth telling. Who are you as a person? How do you feel about an issue? That's my true north when I get ready to put a pen to paper. The third thing I would say also is, it's cool to be right, but it's better to be funny. If we're on stage to just be right, that's fine. But if they're not laughing, that's not comedy. That's just a really dope speech. Y'all believe in ghosts? Yeah. You believe in that? You, what about mediums? You think you can talk to the dead? You don't think that's real? You don't think you can go to a medium for $20 and pull up your dead grandmama on FaceTime? See what's cracking in the afterlife? If talking to the dead is real, at minimum it's rude. It's disrespectful. Fuck you bothering people in heaven. I'm dead. What the fuck else do you want? It's rude. You dead. You in heaven having a good time. Barbecue, lap dances. Here come the waiter. Oh, yes, you have a call on the earth phone. <laughs> you, you, but you do see people talking to the dead. They ain't asking no important questions. Nobody talks to the dead and ask important shit. It's all self-serving, emotional. Well, uh, uh, ask him if he misses me. Uh, what color was the dress? <laughs> You're talking to a goddamn spirit in the fifth dimension, and you giving him account security questions. Ask <laughs> some real shit. The spirit, the only question is, is there a guest list and can you add me to it? <laughs> trying to get into heaven. That's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> you know why I think talking to the dead ain't real? Nobody ever talks to the dead to settle the score. You ever notice on TV, people talk to spirits and shit? It's always somebody they miss, somebody they love, somebody they had an emotional attachment to. We all at the age where somebody in our life didn't die that you kind of you okay with them dying? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice for $20 to pull their ass up and keep talking shit? <laughs> I got a homeboy died. True story. He died owing me $637. I... <laughs> we gotta have a conversation. I'm sorry. I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry you're dead, but yo, does somebody on earth have my six? Cause... <laughs> Yes, I'm talking to the spirit. The spirit is here. What question for the spirit? Ask that nigga where that 600 is. <laughs> Nobody ever talks to the dead to settle the score. If you really think that the dead is a real thing, talk shit to people. I would love to talk to my father. My father died when I was 16. I'm 40 now. You think I ain't got no questions for my dad? Questions I couldn't ask when I was 16. Too young to even realize they were questions worth asking. But for $20, <laughs> pull his ass right up. 
Yes, your father is here. He is in the room. What question for your father? Ask him why in the eighth grade, when he knew I worked extra shifts to pay for a tuxedo to go to middle school prom, he stood me up and didn't take me to prom because he was cross town cheating on my mama. I am asking the spirit, the spirit. I ask, the spirit speaks. The spirit said, nigga, hush. Does that mean anything? Oh my God, yes! That's exactly what the spirit is saying. He said, nigga, hush. Is this too much information for you? I'm sorry, I thought we were live at the cellar. I thought I could say whatever. That's fine. I believe in ghosts. I believe in ghosts. I believe in ghosts because I heard my father's ghost getting ready for work for three weeks after he died. It's not even bullshit. I'm 16. My father died on a Monday morning. And for the next two weeks, two, three weeks, I could hear distinctly downstairs. I could hear my father. I could hear his morning routine. Every morning I heard the shit. Hear the shower curtain push back. Shower curtain come forward. Shower curtain push back. Heard the water run, heard the walk across the linoleum, heard the fridge open, heard the coffee maker, heard him back door, back porch, to the car, garage door up, car out, garage door down, car drive off. Two weeks straight, I hear my father's morning routine. I let the shit roll for two weeks. I go to my mom, I go, yo, what the fuck? Are you not hearing this nigga just <laughs> casually walking through the house? And she's like, no, I ain't hearing no shit like that. You want to go to a therapist? I'm like, no, I don't need to go to no therapist. I'm just concerned that apparently after you die, you still got to go to work. <laughs> How bad is this economy? 